Hey, I'm Brian with HVAC School, HVAC School Podcast, and HVACRschool.com. This video is being made in conjunction with TrueTechTools.com, and we're excited to bring it to you. Generally, I'll say this is going to be a quick video, but this really will be a quick video. And we're actually calculating something that would generally be considered fairly difficult to calculate, which is the total cooling capacity of a piece of equipment. I'm going to be demonstrating how to use two Testo 605i hygrometers in order to calculate system capacity fairly easily. But the first thing you want to do is make sure that they're calibrated close to each other. You're going to need two of them and you want to check and make sure that they're within range. So doing this is pretty easy, measuring the capacity with the 605 eyes, but there are a couple things you're going to need to pay attention to, you're going to need to have beforehand. You need two 605 eyes, you need to have your Smart Probes app open, and then you're also going to need some expanded performance data for your particular piece of equipment so that you know what you're, if what you're reading is correct or not. As you can see, we're reading very close. Right now we're actually dead on with the temperatures of the two. So I have them set up side by side. You can actually edit the view. This is in the basic view. So you can actually edit the view and slide them around, but I like to keep them side to side. You can see that our relative humidities are actually one percentage point uh, or 0.9 percentage point uh, different from each other, which is within the tolerances. And then here are wet bulb temperatures, which are in 0.3. So they're close enough, um, they're well within the tolerances, so now we're ready to go ahead and make our reading. But before we make our reading, we want to know what the system should be reading. I've gone ahead and pulled up our de my detailed cooling capacities for my particular system. My particular system is a 25 VNA 848 condenser with a FE4 ANF06. Uh, air handler or 005 air handler and so I'm going to be in between these two capacities because my outdoor temperature is in between 85 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb and 95 degrees Fahrenheit dry bulb and I'm at max stage so high stage and my uh, indoor temperature is close to 75 but it's going to be more to like 63 degrees wet bulb with 75 degrees dry bulb and then that's where we come across so we're, we're, we're looking for between uh, 42 uh, 1000 BTUs and 45, so 42.79 and 45.28. So this is our cooling and heating power menu. We started off in the basic view menu. If you want to make adjustments, you always hit this little button down here at the bottom. That's where you can edit your, edit your view in the basic view. But in the cooling and heating power view, this is where you would either edit your units of measure as you can see, or where you would actually configure the measurement, this is where you would enter CFM. Return error or supply error just depends on how you're actually taking the reading. If you're actually measuring the flow on the return or supply, say with a flow hood or you're using a vein anemometer or something, you would want to enter in where you've measured this CFM and it compensates for the air volume based on the temperature of the air. This is my Infinity Touch Control, and increasingly you're going to find that controllers are going to give you your output CFM. So as you can see, we're running uh, 1,211 CFM. Now one mistake I almost made is on the performance chart, it actually states that the BTUs are at the 1,400 CFM. And because I had the system in comfort mode, it was producing significantly less than that. So I had to change the settings to efficiency mode, so that way I'm producing 1,400 CFMs on a four ton system, which is 350 CFMs per ton. The reason why I placed the probe below the filter is if I placed it above the filter, it would be line of sight to the evaporator coil, which could affect my reading. In general, it's better to place the probe in the actual return riser or in the direct return if, that's, if you're able to do that. In my particular case, the return runs through the attic behind here, and that would give me a false reading because of duct gains in the return itself if I placed it in the grill. So in order to read return, we're just going to take out my media filter. And I've made a little hook back here so that way this can actually hang in the return airstream. I'm 
Another thing to think about whenever you're placing a probe is to place, place the probe in such a place that the air has a chance to kind of turn and mix before it hits your probe. All right, in my mechanical room, I've got an interesting configuration where my supply duct goes up and then it comes back around. So this one over here is actually supply. I've got a plug here. Of course, this is duckboard construction here in Florida. You can see there's my, there's my probe. I'm gonna place it so that way the air flows through the probe. Here we go. So now we're gonna watch this start to change. If you place your probe too close to the air handler or furnace itself, you can actually hit hot and cold pockets of air before the air has a chance to turn. So now I need to change the numbers in the app so that that way it's reading the correct CFM and you'll see how that affects my reading. You can see my BTUs per hour jumped way up when I adjusted the CFMs. Now I just need to let it run a little longer again because I had to shut it off and turn it back on in order to make that settings change. The actual reason reading is very easy to take. It's just as easy to take as really taking an air temperature split. The trick is getting the correct CFM. And in many cases we overthink this. For the modern ECM blower, variable speed blower, you can very easily look at the fan chart and really if your static pressure is anywhere between 0.1 all the way up to about one inch of static, most ECM motors will produce a set airflow output. You do have to look carefully at your manufacturer's instructions though to make sure that you're, that you're actually reading the correct CFM depending on the way that the air handler or the controls are set up. But once you look at that chart carefully and you find your CFM for whatever speed or mode you're running the system in, it'll be fairly easy to plug that CFM in. If you have a control like the Carrier Infinity Touch Control, of course it's very easy because it gives you a real-time readout. So now you can see after about 20 minutes of runtime that we are reading pretty much right at our rated capacity. 43,000 BTUs, 1,400 CFM, this is a four ton system. Our rated capacity for our conditions is gonna be between 42.79 and 45.26 uh, thousand BTUs. So we're right in that zone of what we would expect. So we've got a system here that is working as expected. Once you plug that CFM reading into the software, then it does the rest of the work and it really makes it very easy for you. The only thing that you then have to do is read your expanded specifications in order to see what the capacity is of your system at the specific load conditions. Because not only is your four ton unit almost assuredly not 48,000 BTUs, you have to know things like derating for a line length, map specific air handler match, indoor and outdoor load conditions. All of these things will affect your output capacity and you don't want to think that there's something wrong with your system when really it's just functioning the way it was designed to function. One thing that may shock a lot of guys is they see that high supply air relative humidity but if you're not used to looking at supply air relative humidities then you're not going to know that this is not that abnormal. We are certainly making water. You've, the unit's just dumping water outside so we know we're, we're, we know we're definitely moving moisture off the coil. So you can see making capacity measurements with the 605i is a pretty simple process. The challenging part is knowing your CFM and then looking through your data in order to make sure that it's actually producing the correct amount of capacity based on how the system's designed. But all in all, I think it's a, it's a good tool and this process is something that I think every technician should have the tools to do and know how to do so that way you can prove, especially say if you're commissioning a new piece of equipment, that you're actually delivering out of the appliance the capacity that the customer purchased. I'm Brian Orr. This video is made in conjunction with True Tech Tools. You can find great tools, including these 605 eyes, at truetechtools.com. Use the offer code GETSCHOOL for a great discount at checkout. Hey, I'm Brian with HVAC School. I'm making this video today in conjunction with True Tech. My phone just fell down. Well, this laptop's not leaking. If you'd like to subscribe to this YouTube channel, I would suggest doing it right up there. Or if you'd like to maybe purchase some great quality tools from True Tech Tools, you can find those down here.